Hello there and welcome back to the channel. In today's video I'm going to give you some information and updates on a few things. Now um, I've been busy with some other stuff so I haven't done one of these videos in a while. There are three things I want to talk to you guys about. Number one, Geo 2.0 is coming to the UK and I'll get onto that first now in a second. Number two, that there is an update for the Sindense Remote Controller. And number three, and the last one we're going to go through, is the update for the Mavic 2, which brought Waypoints 2.0. And I'm going to take you through a quick walkthrough of that at the end of this video as well. Now, to kick this one off uh, at the start, the first thing I'm going to talk about is Geo 2.0. A few months ago, DJI introduced the new version of their Geo system called Geo 2.0, which improved the way it worked. And it was first introduced in the USA. They stopped using AirMap and they chose a new provider. And rather than you having giant big authorization zones, it actually is more reflective of the shape of an airport and the landing and takeoff paths. Now, overall, it was actually a welcome improvement. You can either love or hate NFCs. However, this improvement was better compared to the original Geo. However, it was originally in the USA. Today, DJI have announced that it is now coming to Europe as well, probably the next 30 days or so, and they are going to be using a new provider over here as well, and they're going to be using a company called Altitude Angel, and they are then going to give them all of the information that allows them to have the new type of geo zones in 32 European countries, which will include the UK as well. Now, the good thing about Geo 2.0 is it is better, it is more reflective of a real airport. And the reason for that is the airport itself is no longer just a big round blob. What you now have within Geo 2.0 is you have a runway, which is a restricted zone directly on the runway itself. The area around the runway, up to four kilometers, can be a authorization zone and then from four to six kilometers it can be an enhanced warning zone then on each side of the runway you have landing and takeoff paths which they call altitude zones now these extend right out um, from 3.6 kilometers for the first one which limits you to 60 meters and then an additional 8.4 kilometers which it restricts you up to 150 meters. So it does mean if you are living in a flight path of an airport, it is something to be aware of. However, I do have to say the new version of Geo, which is Geo 2.0, is a welcome upgrade. And I think it will be better than the existing system that you get on the Mavic as it is today, especially for us in Europe. As I said, it's been in the US for a little bit and I've seen no major issues with it at all, if I'm honest. Um, most of the reports around it have been okay. There are some people who will always hate geofencing, that that is a simple reality. However, overall, the new system does seem improved. And the other good thing about it is it's not the same for every airport. The larger the airport, the more restrictions, but the smaller the airport, the less restrictions. And small local ones might have no restrictions at all or not ones that you can't unlock anyway. So it's coming, it'll be coming very, very shortly. The next update probably for this aircraft will have it and it will bring that new Geo system to your Mavic 2, your Mavic Pro and all of the later DJI aircraft. Next, we're going to talk about the update for the Sindense Remote Controller for the Inspire 2 and the M200 series. Now, this update actually came out on the 28th of the 1st, about two weeks ago now. And it is version 2.00.0160. And it's simply to allow support for the multi-link device with the Sindense and the Inspire 2. If you don't know what multi-link is, it's a device that allows you to connect up to three additional remote controllers to your Inspire 2 for live feed and control. Out the box, the Inspire 2 only works with two remotes and even dual ops didn't work 100% either. Now I did do another video on that. Uh, and if you're interested in knowing more about the multi-link, please do go check out that video. I'll put a link to it in the description of this one as well. However, what you simply need to know is the update for Sindense was for multi-link. If you do that update, it is important that you do that update with the multi-link disconnected from this remote controller. Do not have the multi-link connected while you're updating. So update your remote, then connect the multi-link device. Otherwise, it can cause problems. Finally, the next thing I want to talk about is the new firmware that came out on the 21st of January for the Mavic 2 series. That firmware added Waypoints version 2.0. It's the new version of Waypoints. And in a minute, I'm just going to take you through a quick walkthrough and give you guys some information on that and just show you how it works. It didn't come with it out the box, but they have now added it. They've also added support for the lateral vision system, which is the side when using time lapse. 
on the Mavic 2. They've increased the altitude accuracy in waypoints and in time lapse. They've fixed an issue with the remote controller's operating time was shortened when it was using some mobile devices. That was basically some devices were drawing too much current from the RC. Um, they fixed an issue where you could not open sphere panoramas in Facebook. And they fixed the problem with the battery wouldn't charge when it was between 5 and 10 degrees. Now, I never saw that one because it's pretty much always between 5 and 10 degrees where I live. Um, the Vision is 1.00.0300. Something just to be aware of that waypoints only work with Go app for iOS version 4.3.12 and 4.3.12 on Android. So you do need to update your aircraft, your remote controller, and your app as well. And when you update all of them, then Waypoints 2.0 works. I'm just going to now take you through a quick walkthrough of it, its features, and give you guys some information. Okay, so I'm going to walk you through the new Waypoint system on the Mavic 2 Pro, and it's on the Zoom as well. To activate it, first of all, you need to have updated your firmware on the aircraft and your remote controller and your app to the latest version, as I said earlier in the video. You also need your aircraft to be on when trying to plan these. You cannot do this unless your aircraft and your remote controller is turned on as it stands today. Now, to do this, you simply tap on the little remote controller and tap on Waypoints. You then have a new list of options along the top. The first one is the tap to add a waypoint. And what that does is that tells you that if I tap on the screen, it will add a waypoint. And that is that first option there. I'm just going to delete that. The second option is to add a POI. And I'll demonstrate that a little bit more in a second. The third option is to save the mission. So you can save it, build it at home with the aircraft on, take it out to a field and then load it and fly it. The fourth option is to delete them all and clear the screen and the little dots gives you the main settings menu and under this you've got the same top features along the top so waypoint mark for poi and save you've got delete task library and that is your list of saved ones so you can see i've saved two already and you can see they're located in there and then you've got root settings under root settings it allows you to change some of the options the top one is root types now this is polyline or arc polyline will basically follow the POI as it moves around and it will hit each marker as it goes. An arc will smooth out the mission's profile. So if you set a square and set it to arc, it would actually do a rough circle. However, when you are on polyline, you can use point of interest. When you are in an arc, you cannot. So it is something to be aware of. So you can set it, but it does warn you that unable to perform camera action when flight path is set to arc. However, when set to polyline, you can. The next option is task finished options and what it will do when it finishes the mission. You've got a choice of return to home, hover, return to first waypoint, or landing. Choose this one very carefully because you've got to make sure you know what the aircraft's going to do when it finishes. The second one is the most important one in my opinion and it's no RC signal action. This is what happens if your aircraft goes out a signal of the remote controller when you're doing a mission. The options are continue the mission and then it will take the action of what it says at the top when task is finished, return to home, hover or landing. Choose this very, very carefully because this is the one that generally always gets people into trouble. Personally, I don't think you should ever do a mission when you are not in signal and I would always have mine return to home. The next option is all waypoint direction and this sets what the camera on the aircraft does by default. You've got the option of free, which allows you to control the camera with the your stick custom route and that will follow whatever your route is set to do and route basically fixes it that it always looks forward in the flight direction that is following as default is set on custom route and that also allows you to use POIs as well. Okay so to use the system is very simple you first of all tap the waypoint option and tap on the screen where you want to place your waypoints and you will see that it will start to link them up as we go along. So I've set 10 waypoints on the screen, as you can see. You can set up to a maximum of 99 in the system as default. If you look at each waypoint, you'll notice that there's a direction on each one. And that is the direction that the camera is pointing as it's moving through when it is set to custom route. So as you can see, it's pointing forward. So the camera would literally follow the direction of the mission. 
if you wanted the camera to look at something specifically, you can then set a POI, and I'll demonstrate that a little bit more in a second. Now, as default, it will set all of the waypoints to 50 meters in height. You can change these individually as you wish by tapping on the waypoint in question, and then at the, when you swipe up and down on the screen just like that, it allows you to change the height of the waypoint. Now, the only downside is you can only change them one at a time. You can't change them for all that I can see at the moment. I have looked, but I can't find a way of doing it. So you would set it to say 40 meters for that one, tap on waypoint two, and then set it to 40 meters on that one. If I wanted to do it another way, you can then tap the little icon at the top, go 40, three, four, and five to 40 meters, and I could leave the others at 50. Now you can set each waypoint height individually as well, so you can have the aircraft going up and down if you wish. The next option that you've got is the ability to set a POI and that is to set what the camera is going to look at as it performs the mission. So you'd simply tap the POI option and I'm going to stick one here nice and easily in the middle. You can see that a new sort of reddish pink number one has appeared. Now you can now set how many of these waypoints are going to look at that POI and you do that by tapping on it, tapping on link waypoint and you can either select one to five or you can say select all. If I say select all, you can see all of the little arrows have now moved pointing at that first waypoint. If I untick this, I can then say, actually, I just want one, two, and three, and four to look at that waypoint. And you would set just which ones you want. And the reason for that is you can also add a second one. So if I now put another one over by here, I've said that camera, sorry, points one, two, three, and four are going to look at waypoint number one. And then for waypoint number two, I'm actually going to say five, six, seven, eight, nine, and 10, and 11 are going to look at number two. So you can set multiple points of interest depending on what you want to do. Now, as I mentioned, there is a limit of up to 99 waypoints, which means you can't really have any more than 99 POIs, although there isn't actually a limit from I can see by tapping on the screen. The other option under POI is set the altitude of it, and this is how high whatever you want to look at is off the ground. And again, you would set this by swiping up and down on the screen. So if it was a person, I'd probably set it at one or two meters, probably one meter if it was a person. But if it was a house or a building, you might want to set it at sort of 10 or 5 or 10 meters just to make sure that the camera is getting a good view of the middle of the house when you're doing your POI. That is pretty much most of the basic features. The other thing you can do is tap the little save button and then it will save the mission to the remote controller and you can see down here it says task saved successfully and if you wanted to view these back you simply go under the dots click on task library and you can see they're all showing down by there. And then I can tap on that one and I can click load and it'll jump back to that one that I have created just then. Nice and easy, as simple as that. So you can make them at home with the aircraft on and then go to the flight location, load them back up and set it off. Then when you're ready to use it, you can simply tap the go and the aircraft will do its own thing and it will follow the mission. That's pretty much the basics of the new Waypoint system. And that is it for this video. Hopefully the information I've given you has been useful. As I've said, we've got the update for the Sendence, which is basically for the multi-link system. You don't need to do it unless you've got it. Um, we've had a look at the waypoints on the Mavic 2. I have flown it very briefly and it works very well. You know, it's not as involved as some of the systems out there like Litchi and other things like that. However, it's really good to see DJI finally bring that to the Mavic 2 Pro and the Mavic 2 Zoom models as well. Um, that's it for this video. If you like what you see, please do subscribe to the channel and uh, I will do another video again soon. And that is it for this video. If you've liked what you've seen, please do check out. We have over 150 videos on this channel covering everything from DJI right through to the Pixhawk 2 and various other things. We've also got them separated into playlists as well that help you navigate to the ones that might be relevant for you. If you like what you see on the channel, please do subscribe. There is a subscribe button in the bottom right hand corner of every video. And by doing that, you will receive updates on any videos that we release in the future. Finally, there are some links to the products we talk about in the description for each video i would really appreciate it if you are going to buy a product if you would like to buy via those links by supporting the channel it allows us to keep buying products to be able to talk to you guys about
that's it thank you for watching and i'll do another video again soon